is the headline. Stormy teachers pay talks begin. Let me just move that app for you for a better view. There we go. Unions have rejected the up to 10% pay rise by salaries commission. Uh, an image of the secretary general there of uh, NAT and the secretary general of the of Kupet. And uh, on one side is a Kupet secretary general, Akelo Misori, who insists on a 30 to 70% salary increment, rejects SRC's 7 to 10% pay rise. And uh, he's also demanded implementation of career progression guidelines, enhanced medical benefits, especially maternity, pension, review of stipends for intern teachers. And uh, the NAT Secretary General Collins OU wants lowest paid teacher to secure the highest percentage pay rise. SRC has proposed a 7 to 10% rise, opposed to demotion of primary school heads without degrees as proposed by Presidential Task Force. And the union leaders meet teacher service commission officials today to reopen salary increment negotiations that, however, start in acrimony after the representatives of tutors rejected a pay rise proposed by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, insisting on much higher perks than reflect rising cost of living. Also sharing the front page of the Daily Nation. Uh, some other two gentlemen on either side. Technical team has until Friday to draft agenda for Ruto Raila dialogue. The National Dialogue Committee involving President Ruto and opposition leader Raila Odinga's factions has tasked the technical team to frame the issues for discussion ahead of its meeting on Friday. Healthcare through their unions, medics want the crisis facing the health sector, including pay grievances and the hiring of more health workers included in the agenda for the talks. So through, the un through their unions, medics want the crisis facing the health sector, including pay grievances and the hiring of more health workers included in the agenda for the talks. Um, I also see highlighted on the front page here, state agency in race against time to abolish CBC subjects. Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development has nine days to scrap 11 subjects from pre-primary pre to junior secondary schools as recommended by a, presi by a presidential task force. New study routes for boys vaccination against HPV. Researchers want inclusion of men in human papillomavirus vaccination programs. The Lancet study says one in three men worldwide is infected with at least one type of HPV. And uh, six Kericho County officials face ouster over Londiani crash victims fans scandal. County Assembly Committee that probed misuse of money raised to compensate 70, 77 accident victims, including families of 53 who died, recommends that the six officials be removed from office on Healthy Nation, the truth about supplements. Um, a growing number of Kenyans are taking multivitamin and uh, multivitamins and minerals swayed by reports of health benefits inside how the use of, of unprescribed supplements does more harm than good to your body. So uh, should prove an interesting read there. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, let me see. Let's take a look now at the Business Daily front page, though I can see um, in the Healthy Nation, uh, they also talk about math. And if your child is bad at math, I'll just uh, pull it up here uh, from the copy in my hands. Let us see. Okay, I'll pull it up. But let's take a look at uh, the business daily and uh, Hustler Fund. Hustler Fund defaults hit 3 billion shillings in nine months. 29% of 10.2 billion shilling loan book deemed portfolio at risk. Defaults beat microfinance banks who have 23%. So borrowers on the state-backed financial inclusion fund, popular as Hasla Fund, are defaulting on payments at a higher rate than those at commercial banks, SACOs, and microfinance banks, mirroring the headache mobile lenders face advancing unsecured loans to the informal sector. Out of the Hasla Fund's outstanding 10.2 billion shillings worth of loans, 29% is deemed to be portfolio at risk, implying it has not been serviced by the borrowers as per the agreed schedule. This particular report penned by Julian Zamboko, more detail contained therein. Expensive spare parts trigger car write-offs on weak shilling. And insurance companies, this one by Patrick Alushula, are opting to write off some models of cars on Kenyan roads instead of repairing them as the cost of repairs and renting vehicles rise. Cars that are triggering most write-offs include the Mazda, 
Honda and a number of German models such as BMW, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen models. The impact is less on Toyota and Nissan models. Um, and I can see quoted here the Association of Kenya Insurance Chief Executive Tom Gishuhi, who said uh, the weakening of the shilling and shortage of spare parts for some car models have, has triggered a rise in the cost of repairs, making insurers to opt for write-offs. And a motor vehicle is considered a write-off when the repair estimate expressed as a percentage of the pre-accident value as contained on the assessment report exceeds an economical level. On the ticker, the deals Kenya signed with Indonesia on a Widodo visit. Mm -hmm. Yes, Civicon faces pay demand in Kenyan contract row and retirees fail to claim 166 million shillings benefits from NSSF. Retirees fail to claim 166.83 million shillings in benefits due from the NSSF by the end of June 2022. The Auditor General has revealed with the fund coming under spotlight over failure to remit the funds to the unclaimed assets authority. Okay, that is the business daily. Let's take a look now at the standard. And here we go. Ruto grows into darling of the West. Western governments were receptive to opposition agenda, but recent activities show they are abandoning support for the democratic ideals. And with Parliament in the hands of the executive, the political space has drastically changed. A quote here of uh, President William Ruto's, it would be ungrateful for us, of us to vilify the people who are creating opportunities for us. We have huge investments from the U.S. I do beg your pardon. Sorry about that pop-up. Uh, we have huge investments from the U.S. government, Germany, and others. We must know what our interests are and secure them. I see here the first paragraph. President William Ruto's close ties with the West has unsettled opposition, which now seems to be falling out of favor with Western countries. During Daniel Arap Moy, Moy Kibaki, and Huru Kenyatta regimes, the U.S. and most of the European U uh, nations enjoyed a cordial relationship with the opposition. Former U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Smith Hempston, goes down in history as having enjoyed a good relationship with the opposition and at one time almost became its face. Also on the front page here of the standard, university workers face job losses. Some universities have been hit hard by declining admissions beginning September and will have to review their staffing numbers as well as perks paid to employees. The Commission for University Education has recommended that government stops funding rejected degrees, dealing a blow to institutions' sustainability. Three, number of students who chose to study at International Leadership University. Uh, I see here 200 number of courses that attracted less than 10 students, 200 number of teaching staff that private universities are likely to sack in the first year of new funding model, and uh, seven number of students who want to take courses at Pan-African Christian University. Also on the front page of The Standard, I see here tale of widows fighting alone to save their lands, death of a husband is not only a source of grief, but a nightmare to women who battle marauding relatives keen to disinherit them. Uh, Ruto signs deals with Indonesia president. Leaders signed MOU on trade facilitation in the oil and gas, pharmaceuticals, edible oils, agriculture, livestock exports, and textile production. And I see here music festival winners date with president. Winners at the 95th edition of the annual music festival are set to perform at a gala to be held at Nakuru High School. At least 600 classes were showcased this year. I think that's pretty much it. We'll just look at the very top here and see what is contained, uh, what else is contained in the standard this morning. No calm yet on Kisumu Kericho border. AC bid to remove trade barriers and Kenya's big day in Budapest. Okay, let's take a look now at the star. And uh, Ruto plan to keep in touch with hustlers. He has been visiting various parts of the country nearly every week. And uh, the star also tells us that the president repeating election strategy that saw him triumph over Raila. An image here of uh, Moran's transitioning to senior warriors in Narok. Uh, some colorful imagery here. Uh, they've also highlighted on their front page, uh, Michael Waikenda, Boma Stocks, put Kenyans first. Uh, no freedom, neighbor from 
Hell, who raped Granny to serve 30 years in prison. And uh, lawmakers urged to move fast and avert looming electoral boundaries crisis. And uh, at the very top here, they tell us a dialogue team undertakes to ignore panting, ranting, I beg your pardon, ranting politicians. That was uh, one of our stories uh, that we ran earlier. All right, let's wrap it up with uh, the People Daily and Ruto Pay Bill Rule. Hearts state firms. Okay. <laughs> I think that's better now. And uh, directive now challenged. Even as key agencies feel squeeze of order, requiring them to use one pay platform, judge certifies a case urgent. At the very top here, um, Gurma here, yes, we are the team to beat. New season of Kenya Premier League kicks off in six days and defending champions Kogalo are not being mo modest about their ambition. New rules on how to grade KCSC candidates and uh, wedding tragedy survivors speak out. A quote here, ceremony was going on well until we started celebrating the bride. One of the, witness says of the witnesses says of the incident in which six people died when they fell into an underground tank after its lab collapsed as they danced in jubilation. That happened on Saturday. Uh, we did carry a story on Sunday uh, with witness accounts. Kenya and Indonesia in trade pacts. Nairobi exported goods worth 1.14 billion shillings to Indonesia last year, while its imports stood at 27.1 billion, indicating need for the two countries to improve their balance of trade, which is skewed against Kenya. So I will leave the newspaper review there and uh, welcome my panelists ooh, into a studio. I almost tripped there. Uh, and uh, we have...